Hello, everyone. I'm very glad to stand here. Uh, I'm Peggy, an expert of open source governance at Ant Group. Today, we are sharing the growing and sustaining open source projects at Ant Group. And also a brief introduction of myself. I'm Yaya from Ant Group, and uh, I joined uh, Ant Group this June after obtaining my PhD degree. Uh, and then um, um, I uh, currently I focus on the data specific area to help with N Group's open source technology strategy. So, um, first of all, I want to do a quick check. How many of you have heard of uh, N Group, the company? You can raise your hand. Okay, I see two. Uh, so, how about Alibaba Group? Okay, more hands. And um, Alipay? <laughs> yeah. Actually, um, for these two days I've been in Tokyo, I've noticed that many places here support Alipay, which is quite convenient. And N Group used to be a sub-business group of Alibaba, formerly known as N Financial. Uh, we own the world's largest digital payment platform, Alipay. And uh, it's a solution that enables users to make cross-border uh, payments sim seamlessly. And over 88 million merchants around the world are connected with Alipay, supporting 1.5 billion payment accounts across uh, 55 markets as of 2023. So whether you are shopping uh, internationally or visiting a small business, uh, it allows you to pay using your home e-wallet no matter where you are. So another important service offered is World First, uh, which, which is a platform tailored for SMEs. Uh, it offers secure, one-stop digital payment and financial services. So from the picture in the right, you can see that um, Alipay's te technology is making every uh, day trans transactions more convenient from tourist spots in the mountains of China to some simple noodle shop in Hangzhou, customers can pay effortlessly with mobile payments, no cashier needed. So the name Ant uh, is important to us because we believe that just like Ant, that small is beautiful and small is powerful. So a quick brief timeline of Ant Group's recent history. Uh, it was originally the same uh, company as Alibaba, as mentioned before, and then we spilled uh, to form a separate company. So this change uh, meant that Ant Group focused uh, more on our core strengths, which is Alipay and other fintech-related in initiatives. So in 2022, uh, in response to some new regulations and compliance requirements, uh, we underwent a significant restructuring. This led to a shift in our business model, moving towards to a B2B2C focus, especially tailored for Alipay. And it was pivotal year as we made the decision to um, step away from cl uh, cloud product offerings to concentrate more on the financial services. Um, so last year brought changes in our leadership and uh, internal structure. Uh, the, the focus has shifted towards platform development, uh, SaaS services, and technical products. And this year we continue to refine our strategy, uh, building on the transformations we've made and focusing on innovations that drive forward to uh, the core of our business. So now let's talk uh, take a closer look at N Group's open source and OSPO uh, journey. So N Group already had a lot of open source projects before we even established an OSPO. Uh, you can see um, before uh, and around 2020, um, we have projects in various categories, including uh, N Design, UMI, and NV. They focus on developer experience and um, front-ended technologies and um, cloud native solutions such as Kata containers and SofaStack uh, and also infrastructure with projects like OceanBase and Oculum and um, also AI because we have contributed up upstream a lot to Ray. So in 2021, uh, we faced some challenges, particularly in compliance, uh, which triggered the is, is uh, establishment of our OSPO. Uh, we focus on what we call cleaning the room, uh, setting the stage for uh, more organized and strategic open source initiatives. 
In 2022, we began supporting high priority techno technical projects, helping them with their potential. Um, and uh, certified as a core part of uh, our technical strategy. So um, this year is all about depending, uh, sorry, uh, we, we deepening our commitments to key ecosystem projects and talent development. Uh, we are diving deeper into dev developer tooling um, and uh, improving the developer experience. So our, go our goal is to continue expanding our impact, um, this time to focus on global ecosystem growth and broader international collaborations. And we can also see more and more open source projects emerged from N Group alongside with the years, devoting to different uh, technical areas. So uh, this, th from this landscape, you can see uh, all, uh, most of our open source projects, uh, in it, they are mostly initiated by N Group. Some are devoted to, uh, donated to Apache or CNCF, or uh, there some of them are Linux Foundation projects. Um, but the overall, they are divided into four layer architecture, um, human computer interaction, artificial intelligence, distributed computing, and uh, uh, trust native security. So uh, technical branding needs is one side to explain why N Group is devoting to open source. Uh, for a long time, the company was positioned as fintech, but there is still a tech in it. So open source is the best way to build tech technical awareness when there is no product. And in another hand, um, participating in open source and joining upstream communities are best ways to build developer awareness and to motivate the engineering culture within the company. So technical strategy needs is another perspective. We, we believe in open source uh, is important to our uh, strategy in three layers. So one, uh, open source is, a, is an innovative collaboration uh, methodology, especially for infra technologies. Two, uh, it's a methodology for building trust and promote technical uh, craftsmanship. Uh, so third, is a go-to-market methodology to build a commercially successful software. So that's why Peggy, as an open source governance expert within the N Group OSPO, is building an open source incubator internally. So now we'll come Peggy to explain more on what, it, what the incubator is and how it works. Okay, uh, when we say uh, incubator, uh, like did some research. Now let's see the different types of incubators. Y Combinator focuses on strategic business planning and mentorship support, ensuring that startups not only have a solid foundation for their business models, but also receive the, their business, uh, but also receive the guidance of experienced entrepreneurs. Their emphasis of developing a product MVP enables companies to quickly va validate their ideas in the market, supported by the smart investment setup that matches the fundings with the startup's growth path. Also, their thriving uh, alumni network fosters a collaborative environment where, par where uh, past participants can share their insights and opportunities, further enhan uh, enhancing the ecosystem. On the other hand, the CNCF incubator takes different approach. CNCF incubator uh, projects have a maturity level of sandbox incubating or graduated, which uh, corresponds to their uh, innovators, early adopters, and early majority tiers of the crossing the chasm diagram. The majority uh, level uh, is a signal by CNCF as to what sort of enterprise should be adopting different projects. Projects increase their maturity by demonstrating their sustainability uh, uh, of CNCF technical oversight committee. Uh, that is uh, adoption, a healthy rate of changes, and committers from multiple organizations have adopted to the CNCF code of conduct. 
In this picture, you can see the OSS growth core engine. First, let's drive into our strategic planning. You know, it's all about getting a grip on the technical landscape. We are talking about sporting opportunities, sizing up the competition, and using data to make smart decisions. Now, moving on to the governance, this is where we set the stage with clear organization, process, and principles. It's also about making sure we are on the right side of compliance, legal matters, and security. Plus, we are all about nurturing talent and community education. Next, let's talk about the developer experience design. We are cooking up SOPs, checklists, and reference designs to make things easier. We are also mapping out technical roadmaps and workflows to keep our developers moving at a good clip. And of course, we are always looking forward to engage with our community. When it comes to uh, developer experiment, experiment infra and tooling. We are building compliance and security into our foundation. We are also have developer vitality and data driving tools. Plus, we are equipping our community managers with the tools they need to keep the things running smoothly. Finally, we focus on the branding and ecosystem. We are fostering collaborations and meetups to make strong community. And we are working on developer engagement and a CRM to keep our connections strong. So that is the OS, OSS growth core engine. This is the heart of our open source strategy, driving growth and innovation. Then, well, the incubator needs a supported team and org, org, org design. It's just like the GOC of CNCF. We, our team includes growth and international, uh, internationalization, developer experience, governance, content marketing, and data science. We also have a virtual organization, the Ant Open Source Technical Community. Uh, this consists of teams. There are many experts from various technical fields. Their responsibility is similar with the CNCF TOC. For example, re review and oversee projects to ensure their comply community guidance, provide technical consulting and guidance to help projects grow and succeed, participate in discussion and decisions regarding the technical direction. Besides TAC teams, we still have a cross-functional support teams, such as legal, security, compliance, finance, and branding. Uh, this is a virtual organization, and we hold regular meetings every quarter to discuss common issues faced by current open source projects. Last, the incubator needs a life cycle management. This is architecture design of an open source incubator. It's divided into three parts, which are sandbox, incubation, and graduation. Uh, each open source project must complete specific tasks at each stage. Depending on the stage of the project, we provide different resources. The internal instructor, the physical virtual team focus on full life cycle support for our projects. And, open, and OSS incubators offers not only standardized solutions of education, governance support, developer experience tooling, operational cases, but also tiered consulting and oper operational solutions for individual projects to grow from sandbox to incubation, then to graduation. Now, how are the operation of the incubator? The answer is using programs to formalize the practice and building products to solve the problem systematically. We recognize that the true power of open source lies in the community. That is why we have focused on our efforts on several key areas. The first one is promoting open source culture. The second one is growing talent systematically. The third one is utilizing data driven tools. Last not, uh, and not least is enhancing developer experience. 
The first one is promoting open source culture. They are including three parts, community engagement. We actively engage with the community through the conference, meetups, and online forums. These interactions help us to stay connected, share knowledge, and learn from the experience of others. The second one is community, uh, open source uh, advocacy. We advocate for open source within our industry and beyond. By sharing our success and challenges, we hope to inspire other organizations to adopt an open source practice and contribute to the community. The third one is celebrating diversity. We believe that diversity drives innovation. That is why we committed to creating an inclusive environment where developers of all backgrounds and perspectives can concentrate and uh, thrive. Now let's see some cases. The, in, the half, uh, in the first half of this year, our company hosted an internal 48 hours hackathon. There are 130 developers participant. The main goal was to spark the organization's technical vitality. They utilized open source software to transform their idea into a demo. This allowed in developers to truly feel the joy of the coding. The left picture is uh, showing the developers are uh, hiking in our company's gym. The right picture is a group that includes all the judges and participants. This event uh, not only encourages collaboration, but also provides a plat platform for developers to show their skills. It's promoted a steady stream of talent to join the open source community. The second case is the inclusion conference. At the inclusion conference in September, Shanghai, Ant Open Source hosted a forum and a developer camp. There are many project owners giving a lightning talks at the developer camp, sharing their projects. This event helped the owner to broaden their technical horizons. The second one is a talent development. At Ant Group, we believe that the future of Ant of open source lies in the hands of today's developers. That is why we have made talent development a, a cornerstone of our incubator model. One is education and training. The other is the mentorship of program. Now let's see, we, divided, uh, we divide our talent pipeline into three levels. At the top are the open source leaders for whom we have designed at the open source club. In the middle are the core developers for whom we have designed the open source workshop. At the bottom are the new colleagues for whom we have designed the open source training camp. These pictures are about our open source club. Also, we have managed to raise the average skill, of, uh, skill level of our open source leaders through the open source club. I have to admit that we have facing some challenges. For instance, some of them are too busy with work to attend our events, so they send their backups instead. Or due to the job changes, they are no longer in charge of the projects. These situations somehow have a negative impact on our outcomes. Another problem is how to measure the outcomes of talent development. Should, uh, should we look at the number of the ambassador of CNCF? We are still figuring it out. Now, uh, let's thank you for Xiaoya. Yes, for um, data-driven tools and incentives. Um, yeah, thanks, Peggy. Because after joining Ant Group Osbo in July, I was taking the job from uh, the from the data perspective. So in the incubator, I will focus on how to build um, data-driven tools and also use data to uh, help projects um, to do analysis uh, to monitor their statues, also to sometimes provide community analysis and insights for them. Uh, also, we um, are in the stage of, in the exploration stage of um, um, trying some new mechanism to promote uh, better uh, growth and um, 
um, incentives through uh, data-driven um, leaderboards. So in this section, I will introduce uh, as what kind of data uh, metrics and tools and platforms we use um, to provide some, and also I will provide some simple cases for um, uh, analyze and service. Um, so uh, first, we leverage uh, existing good practices in the open source community uh, using community metrics and an analyze platform. Um, so the first one is Chaos, I think maybe um, many people have heard of. It's a Linux Foundation initiative focusing on uh, measuring and improving the health of open source communities. So uh, Chaos provides uh, rich metrics um, for projects on how to analyze and how to build a health open source community. So the other one is Open Digger, which is a platform I mentioned. Uh, it's an open source analyzing platform initiated by my laboratory during uh, my doctoral studies. Um, open Digger, it continuously collects big data on open source platforms. Um, and also it, it implements many metrics proposed by Chaos uh, based on those uh, quantify, uh, it implements those con quantity uh, quantifying metrics. Um, so the, the the data based on the developer behavioral data generated on um, oh, on software development collaboration platforms, mostly uh, like GitHub. But in China, we also have uh, other such platforms like Giti and um, Autumn Git. Um, and also Open Digger will output this uh, data for downstream use. Um, at the same time, it also builds some uh, build relationships from open collaboration data to uh, construct network model and propose metrics based on such a uh, network model. So with such projects providing uh, knowledge, tools, and platforms, I will introduce some tools and um, analyze cases. So the first tool is a uh, first type of tool is the dashboard, uh, which provides a bird's eye view to understand uh, the overall open source status of the company, and also it can provide some status uh, the status for some specific open source project just at a glance. So the origin of creating such dashboard is because the senior management um, they have a strong preference of, for data. They want to see how many open source projects we have, how many contributors there are, and uh, the stages of each pro project. And this project is shows, uh, it's just an example because it's from 2022, but you can see it shows the overall dashboard of N groups projects providing uh, different dimensions such as project activity stages and license stages. And um, in the detailed dashboard of some um, specific project, we will show the projects metrics like uh, trends of stars, forks, and um, pull requests, and also the overall respons uh, responsible time and um, uh, like um, issue resolution time. Uh, time, these metrics are all from, uh, all defined by chaos. Um, so with such tool, open source project owners can track the health and activity of their projects. Also, they can identify areas for improvements and opportunities for growth. And the second tool, uh, tools, uh, they are community insights tools. Actually, in this uh, slides, you can see two, uh, two, two tools. Uh, in the left is um, actually a, a, a um, extension, a plugin um, named HyperCRX. Um, these two tools are also or provide uh, the, the data services are all provided by Open Digger, um, and they are both use uh, chaos metrics. So HyperCRX on the left um, is a browser extension designed to enhance the open source experience by providing insights into GitHub projects and developers. So this tool is now available on both Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge, and it has uh, currently a total of around 2,000 users. Uh, this extension, it uh, caters to a diverse range of users, including software engineers, engineers, project maintainers, open source newcomers, and company employers. So the, the 
the source code of this tool is also available on GitHub. I won't um, elaborate too much here, but uh, most of the visual elements you can see in the graph, like lines of code changes, number of pull requests, um, like number of issues just by hovering on the button, different byte buttons. If you're hovering on uh, stars and forks, you can see the trends of um, the numbers for each month. Um, so um, just with such extension installed, you can find additional such visual elements. So I won't do a live demo, demo here. Welcome to install and experience. And um, you can see there are also networks um, relationship graphs provided uh, for users to explore. And uh, such relationship networks, it comes from um, the tools in the left uh, named OS graph. It's a tool derived from um, TrueGraph. TrueGraph is an open source graph database initiated by N Group. Um, and I don't know how many people here uh, have heard of the OSS Insight platform which is derived from uh, from the open source new circle database TIDBs also provide community insights, OSS insight. Uh, but OS graph is similar only that it looks from the perspective of, of open source data as graphs, uh, like uh, the relationship between open source um, we think is naturally like this, whether it's collaboration between developers or follow up between developers. So OS Graph abstracts all entities such as developers, open source projects, orgs, issues, PRs, topics, et cetera, on GitHub into relationships on uh, which we can explore open source relationships uh, and collaboration based on graphs in different scenarios. And from the, the example shown here, you can see what projects uh, Linux is involved in besides maintaining uh, Linux and uh, Git. You can see there is also a subservice. So through data, we can also do some open source ecological analysis for technical strategy. For example, uh, with the popularity of OpenAI and LLM, Ray has received everyone's attention, and N Group has actually invested a lot uh, for the past several years in Ray community. Um, and uh, from the picture in, in the left, we can also feel that uh, Ray and Spark, um, they are in the, the, tr the development trends, they are um, in a status of alternate, alternating each other. Um, and um, from the perspective of the evolution of the large model category, a uh, large model ecology, uh, ecology uh, we can see, we can feel that agent framework is a new uh, ecological niche that has emerged since last year, um, and um, a large number of projects have grown up. So, based on the development trends of this project, uh, we will help help developers um, to determine what kind of technical se selection can be made when they want to build some AI um, applications. And also, if they want to open source a similar project as agent framework, they can compare with uh, some ex uh, excellent competitors. Um, so the indicators you can see we use here named open rank is a metric built on a uh, built by Open Digger and it's based on such a network model I mentioned before to reflect the influence of the project in the global ecosystem. And we also do customized analysis for open source project teams. For example, uh, these two pictures show the status of TrueGraph, TrueGraphDB in terms of developers and issues. And it can be seen that since uh, TrueGraph, it's op uh, since it's open source in 2022, it has continued to see new contributors. Uh, but in the same time, we continue to see a large number of inactive contributors. So based on such situation, we will encourage um, project owners to contact inactive contributors and also to conduct some research and follow-up visits. And on um, this picture, uh, it displays the community issue uh, status. So we can see that um, in addition, uh, this picture can uh, reflect in, uh, the number of issues open and closed um, along, uh, during the time and um, um, 
also it can be seen that the stages of coming the stages of issues resolution they are uh, in a healthy state state because um, with issues open they are also um, closed there are there is no large number of issues piled up and um, um, the Open rank metrics, they can, we can also show the detailed contribution uh, within a project. So we use um, such uh, metrics to show the detail of collaboration. This picture shows detailed collaboration in the community. And you can also see, uh, if you click on each uh, specific developer, you can see uh, where his contribution from, uh, from which issues or pull requests. And you can explore. Uh, you can explore the detailed contribution um, on this platform for any open source projects on GitHub that is developed on GitHub. Um, but uh, when it comes to contribution evaluation, we admit that GitHub data is not enough to review uh, non-code contributions in open source. That's why it's. Uh, only are still in an early stage exploration, but we ho hope such mechanism, uh, together with purple incentive, uh, they could engage internal developers and also community contributors and to stimulate community vitality. Uh, so for enhancing developer experience, this is also in an early stage. We just launched this part because our team recently welcomed a new developer advocate in September. Uh, but in terms of um, developer experience, we will expand on onboarding to streamline the onboarding process to make it easy for new contributors to get up to speed quickly and uh, start making valuable contributions. And also documentation, because we believe clear documentation is critical for any open source project. So we will work with our developers to create and maintain a documentation that is accessible to developers at all levels. And also we have um, support and resources uh, like FAQs, uh, courses, and direct lines of communications with project maintainers. So um, to summary. OK. Uh, what we just talked about is our practice in Ant Group. To sum up, I have two following the points to share. The first one is uh, productionized incubator will help uh, formalize the process. People have two products. People love products to ensure the process. Moreover, uh, more AI-enabled community tools will sh for sure help. The third one is people are difficult to train. It's much easier to guide. Uh, them through the mice by blocking the an anti patterns and uh, routing them to the right ones. Uh, so, uh, at uh, last but not least, we have a call to actions. The first one is we need partic uh, participation partic partic uh, uh, in our journey. Uh, to harm this uh, potential of ant group open source software, we have realized that we are some, uh, somewhat alone in this uh, exploration. We need more participants to join us, to share their insights, and to collaborate on projects that can push the uh, boundaries of uh, what possible. Let's invite industry experts tech enthusiasts and uh, innovators to contribute of our OSS community. By doing so, we can foster a more uh, vibrant ecosystem where ideas are exchanged and challenges are tackled uh, and uh, the innovation are born. The, first, uh, the second one is we need more uh, cases and the trials uh, to truly understand the impact and the potential of our uh, initiatives. We need a set of care. Uh, we need a set of case studies and the trials. We should aim to create a library of real-world examples that can serve an evolution by baseline, uh, much like the case studies used in MBA programs or the stories of successful uh, entrepreneurs. These cases will not only help us uh, exercise our progress, but also inspire others 
to follow in our footsteps. Let's reach out our network, conduct interviews, and document the success and learning from our tools to build the valuable resource. The third one is mentors and uh, trustworthy leaders. Uh, the, the absence of visible mentors and community leaders in corporate settings is a gap that we must uh, address. We need to identify and engage with a row of models who can guide our teams, provide wisdom, and inspire action. Uh, let's establish a mentorship program that uh, connects our employees with industry leaders, uh, thought leaders, and successful entrepreneurs. By doing this, we can create a culture of learning and growth that is fueled by the experience and knowledge of who uh, have walked the path before us. The first, uh, the fourth one is broaden the offerings. Can we work with the foundations or part partners to make the graduation offering more in inductive? Uh, as we look to the future, we must consider how we can make our offerings more attractive to our projects. Let's explore opportunities to the collaborate uh, for the with the CNCF foundations, educational institutions, and the industry partners to in enhance our graduation offerings. By doing so, we can provide more lucrative opportunities for our projects, such as courses, tours, and so on. This is not only a benefit of our projects, but also strengthening our relationships with the key partners and enhancing our reputation as an open source program of our, uh, office. Oh, uh, this is uh, uh, today we share about. Thank you very much. So do we have any questions? Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, to me, uh, it was really interesting. You have uh, many education programs, like workshops. Uh, and in my understanding, the workshops are mainly focused on development of uh, so, or software or, or kind of uh, community leadership. But I'm wondering, that, so do you have any education program for license compliance or uh, security? or uh, some, some, something uh, like that. So your question is our mentorship, uh, internal mentorship is mainly focused on developer, um, how to development and also community engagement, but there is, is there any um, workshop for license compliance? Um, actually, uh, we work closely to the license compliance team, but currently we didn't organize such workshops, but for project, if they have such related questions, uh, we work very close to the um, compliance lawyers team, uh, and uh, we formed an uh, um, expert, uh, which is quite similar to CNCF TOC. It's a technical committee. They will get, give advice when mm -hmm. projects they run, run into such issues. And uh, before, uh, sorry, uh, before each project they are uh, they are planning to open source. Uh, they some project they have um, developed internally for quite a time, and they when they are planning to open source, we will have a whole pr process. And uh, that is when the compliance team, they will get involved um, a lot to uh, make sure the code, they don't have any uh, upstream um, license um, risk. Thank you. So a uh, second question. So how big the so, compliance team, as uh, so a lawyer team, is in your so, ant group? Hundred people was ten or how many people in the compliance team? Yeah, yeah. Do you know? Oh, well, 
we have uh, two people in compliance team oh. in our open source community, um, but uh, in our group, uh, in our company, uh, the compliance team about uh, uh, 10 people. Oh. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, you mentioned about developer experience that you all just started. Uh, do you have good ways to measure what is good developer experience across since you have so many projects? So your question is about what is how to measure a good developer experience. Um, we haven't started that yet, um, but. Um, I think the question before, uh, before this question is to define what is a developer experience. What we mentioned here is related to uh, documentation. Sorry. Documentation and how to uh, how newcomers to onboarding. So there are uh, it just I take documentation as an example. There are some uh, qualitative uh, metrics. Uh, I also learn from the chaos community as um, how um, how accessible of this documentation to everyone. And um, do you have a code of conduct? Do you have uh, like uh, you specifically declare what your license you use? And um, 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 but uh, there uh, we haven't worked on some quantif quantifiable metrics related to uh, in this area. And uh, yeah, I see the <laughs> sessions. Uh, we we are reached at the time. So if we have other other questions, uh, we can continue the discussion in hallway. So thank you everyone for joining this session. Thank you.